Okay, so we're back. So what I have up right now is our HTML5 document, and I've modified it a little bit. The first thing I'll probably notice is there's a giant picture of a cat in our document. And if you look at the code, that picture is wrapped in a tag called figure. And the purpose of the figure tag is to encapsulate an image, a graphic, a graph, or any other quote-unquote figure. The W3C defines the figure tag as follows. The figure element represents some flow content, optionally with a caption that is self-contained like a complete sentence, and is typically referenced as a single unit from the main flow of the document. The element can thus be used to annotate illustrations, diagrams, photos, code listings, etc. Now the next element is the time element, and as you can probably guess, the purpose of the time element is to express a value of time. The time element refers to whatever the harboring article element is. So we have an article element, inside of it we have a time element, and also inside of the article element we also have an image and a little paragraph tag. So the time element is referring to that information. The time element has two attributes. The first is date time. The second is pub date. Date time is a machine readable value for search engines and the like. And pub date simply says that the value of date time represents the publication date of the article. The time element represents its contents along with a machine readable form of those contents in the date time attribute. It's important to realize that time can be expressed in a variety of different formats within the time element. Those different formats are presented at the W3C website, and I encourage you to explore those for yourself. Now the last tag that we have is the mark tag, and the mark tag is being used to highlight a small amount of text that says cats are awesome. Now, typically, you do not want HTML markup to be used as an aesthetic tool. You want to use CSS for that. However, the mark tag, by default, highlights text, and that's what it's used for. The mark element represents a run of text in one document marked or highlighted for reference purposes due to its relevance in another context. Now, the last two elements I'd like to discuss are the details and the summary elements. Now, these two elements combine to create a bit of a dynamic drop-down menu. So let's take a look now. So there's our drop-down menu. If you would like it to default to a state of open, you can go to the details element and you can add an attribute of open. And as you can see, it defaults to the open state. The details element represents a disclosure widget from which the user can obtain additional information or controls. The first summary element child of the element, if any, represents the summary or legend of the details. If there is no child summary element, the user agent should provide its own legend, e.g. details. So now that we're at the end of this video, you should have a general understanding of the following elements. Figure, time, mark, and details. And that basically sums it up for this video. Until next time, bye-bye.